Hello everybody, welcome to Christy Dawn's Cooking and today I'm going to share with you probably my family's new favorite meal that I make and that is, can you see it? I don't want to tilt it. Ooh, a double crust chicken pot pie. It's absolutely delicious and it may seem intimidating at first but if you just follow the steps it actually is very very easy. It comes from my favorite new cookbook, this is Cook's Country. If you haven't seen the um, cooking show on PBS, make sure you watch it at some point. It, it, they're absolutely amazing. They're actually from um, America's Test Kitchen, and they've done a whole series on uh, more like country-style cooking. So as you can see, I have lots of things labeled here, lots of things I want to try. And I've only made it through maybe about the first third of the, of the cookbook. I actually read cookbooks like like novels. <laughs> I will sit there and just read them and read them and read them and then mark the ones that I want to try. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoy this. I had a lot of fun making this, so stay with me and I'm going to show you exactly how I made, I don't want to spill it, I want to drop it, double crust chicken pot pie. I'll be right back. So for the crust, we're going to need some sour cream, one egg, flour, salt, and some butter. One and a half sticks. I'm going to get everything set up and show you exactly how we make this easy crust. Okay, so for the crust, the first thing I'm going to do is I went ahead and I put a half a cup of sour cream in the bowl right here. And I'm going to crack one egg. And make sure that you always crack in a separate bowl just to make sure the egg's okay. Sometimes you get one that's not so nice. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to combine these together. Okay, just do a whisk. And what the sour cream does with the um, crust is it makes it kind of tangy. And obviously it's a savior, a savor, <laughs> savory crust. I can talk today. So you're not going to see any sugar in this crust. Make sure it gets all well blended. Okay. So that looks good. So I'm going to set that aside. Then in my food processor, I love when we make crusts in the food processor. It makes it so easy. I have two and a half cups of flour, and I'm going to add to it one and a half teaspoons of salt. And I'm using the pink salt. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this pulse maybe about three or four times. Whoops. Not if I plugged it in. There it goes. Okay. Okay, that looks good. Just enough to get it all together. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and add in 12 tablespoons of cold butter that I have cut up into about half inch squares. So we're gonna go ahead and get this in here. So it's one and a half sticks. It's a short crust, but that's what makes it so good. It's gonna make it big, super, super flaky. So let's kind of just make sure they're broken apart when we put them in. If you do not have a Cuisinart or some kind of food processor and you decide to get more into cooking, I highly recommend it. I use mine all the time. This was actually my grandmother's, and I think I bought it for her years ago. So when she passed on, um, it was given back to me. So it's special. So, but like I said, I think it's about 35 years old. If you buy a high quality one, I'm telling you, they'll last forever. I'm a big believer in that, buying high quality kitchen tools. Alrighty, last of the butter. I don't want to handle it too much because we don't want it to melt. We want it to stay cold. Okay, now what I'm going to do is now to pulse it um, for about five or six times and we'll, we'll give it a look. We want it to be about the size of peas. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep doing that. Yep, looks good. See, they're real small. Alrighty. 
so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in about half of the sour cream and egg mixture. Just about half. Doesn't have to be exact. We're going to go ahead, do a couple more pulses. Okay, that's looking good. Now we're going to do the rest. Sorry, it's not a real good shot for you guys. Get my spatula back out, get every little bit out. You want to make sure you get all that egg and sour cream in there. All right, let's process it again. Okay, it's looking good, it's starting to come together. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna let it go until it all comes together in a ball. together perfect that's exactly what we're looking for so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of flour on our work surface here it's been clean I might take it out take the dough out be very very careful because that blade is super super sharp Dump it all out. Careful with the blade. Some left in here. Okay. I'm going to give it a quick little knead. Not too much. Just kind of bring it all together. Whoops. to a ball. Just for a couple of minutes, doesn't have to be perfect. Because now what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and cut this in half and we're gonna let it, we're gonna wrap it up in some saran wrap and we're gonna let it sit for an hour. It needs to rest. So I wanna do one mm, a little bit bigger than the other one because you know, in a pie plate, you have that sort of you know, convex shape. So, or concave, I should say, concave shape. So I want one to be a little bit bigger than the other one. So we'll do it like that. Okay, and then I'm also going to make a smaller one because I'm going to make a little one for my mom. So I'm going to make one for us and I'm going to make a little baby one for mom. So I'm going to cut a little piece off like this. It's like three shapes. So I'm going to get them into a ball, kind of into a disc. And then after they're chilled, it makes it so much easier to roll them out if we get them into a disc first. So here's mom's. Okay, here's going to be the top crust. And then here's going to be the bottom crust. And this crust is very, very forgiving. So we can actually, when we decide to roll it out, we can, you know, cut some pieces here, add it to another piece there. So let me grab some saran wrap. I'll be right back. There's 
one. Let's see if you guys can see it. a little baby one for mom. Okay, so these are going to go into the fridge for an hour, and then when those are done, um, I will bring you back. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and start on the filling. So I'm going to get all this cleaned up and come back and show you exactly how we make the delicious filling. So for the filling, we need some butter, some half and half, some chopped celery, chopped onion, chopped carrots, some flour, salt and pepper, a chopped small potato, three cups of cooked chicken, some dried thyme, some chicken stock, frozen peas, and one egg. I'm gonna get you all set up on the stove and I'll show you exactly how I make the filling. Okay, so here on the stove top, you will see that I went ahead and I took the four tablespoons of butter and went ahead and put that on medium heat and slowly melted it. When you can start to see foam, white foam, you know that it's ready. So now I'm gonna add, I chopped up one small onion, finely diced, um, two carrots and two celery ribs. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started in here. And I'm going to cook this for about six minutes until it's all, these are all tender. And I'll make sure first I get them all coated with the butter. So my heat's about on a medium. Set my timer for about six minutes. And when that goes off, I'll be back and show you what we do next. Okay, I almost forgot that we need to add, at this point, we need to add the salt and pepper. So I have a half a teaspoon of each. Half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Make sure those are mixed in really, really well. Okay, now I will come back when all the vegetables are tender. Okay, guys, we're back, and the timer's just getting ready to go off. And you can see, well, there it is. And you can see how tender the vegetables have become. The color has changed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add in six tablespoons of flour. And just sprinkle it all over. Now we're just going to cook this for about a minute or two until it gets golden. We want to make sure that we coat the vegetables with the flour evenly. And you'll know it's ready when the flour becomes sort of a golden color. Just a minute or two. We just want to cook out that raw flour taste. smell it kind of smells nutty you can you can smell that you know that it's ready now I'm going to add slowly add in two and one quarter cups of chicken stock I'm going to add a little bit give it a good stir Little bit more. Add a little bit more. Make 
so it's all well combined. See how it's getting thick? That's from the flour that we put in there just a minute ago. Right now, I just have it on a medium heat. A little bit more. Make sure it's all really well combined here. A little bit more. A little bit. Okay. I'm going to stir that really, really well. Then we're going to add in a half of half of a cup of half and half. Now I actually did not have half and half, but I did have some heavy cream. So I went ahead and just did heavy cream, quarter cup of heavy cream, and a quarter cup of milk, which is basically half and half. So, so we're going to add this all in. All right. All right. Make sure this is all mixed in, blended well. Okay. Then I'm going to add in a half a teaspoon of dried thyme. The recipe calls for a teaspoon of um, fresh thyme. If you don't have fresh, then just go ahead and substitute dried, but just make sure you decrease the amount by half because it's much more intense than fresh. Obviously fresh is better, but it's in the winter, I don't have any fresh thyme here, but I did have some, some dried, so that's what we're going to use. Then, I'm gonna go ahead and put in, I have one um, small potato that I went ahead, I put in some salted water, because I didn't want it to turn brown. So I'm gonna drain it really, really well and add the potato in. Okay, so one small potato chopped up fine. All right, I'm going to give this a really good stir. I'm going to bring this up to a boil, and it needs to simmer for about eight minutes so that everything gets really nice and thick, and the potatoes cook, and the rest of the vegetables continue to cook as well. So when that is finished, I will bring you back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so the timer just went off. It's been eight minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat. And now the last thing we have to do for the filling is to add in the chicken. I have about three and a half cups here of diced chicken. You can do shredded or diced. My family likes it diced. As well as three quarters of a cup of frozen peas. So they need to be frozen because the heat from the filling is going to is going to cook those. Stir this up really, really well. And then, after this is completely stirred, I'm just going to let this sit here and cool down for a little bit. I'm going to bring you back over to the island because we are going to roll out some pie dough. I'm going to show you how I make these. One's going to be a double crust, and for my mom, I'm going to do a single crust. I can show you both ways of doing it. So, I'll be right back. So the dough has been resting in the refrigerator for about a half an hour. So I thought I'll go ahead and I'll make mom's first, show you how I'm gonna do that. So first we need to just put a little bit of flour down on our work surface. I did take the dough out and let it sit for about 10 minutes just to kind of bring it up more like room temperature a little bit. So first thing I'm going to do, go ahead and put a little bit of flour on my rolling pin. And this might be, you know, more dough than we need for her little individual pot pie. 
But this is such a great idea. If you know somebody is sick, if you know, like today, we have bad weather. Whoops. We had a snowstorm the last two days, so we have about 10 or 11 inches of snow outside. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all. Make sure it's enough. It is. I just want enough so that it covers over the top. So that looks pretty good. So I'm actually going to go ahead and turn it over upside down. I'm going to give it a nice little trim. And it's going to shrink a little bit in the oven. So I'm going to leave about, I don't know, about a half of an inch, maybe a third of an inch. And I'll save these little trimmings for... Okay, so we need some for our the bigger one all right so that looks good so I'm gonna go ahead it doesn't matter if it's perfect I'm gonna set it on a lined on a lined cookie sheet and I'm gonna continue on with the other ones so I'm gonna go ahead and do the base now for the big one for the family size Again, take it out of the wrapping, put some more flour down, and I'm going to flour my rolling pin. I'm just going to roll it, turn it a quarter, roll it, just keep doing that, and it helps to keep the round shape. We're going to trim it, so don't worry if it gets a little oblong looking. So we continue on with it. Also, too, when you're turning it, it prevents it from sticking. That way you know it's not sticking. Still got a ways to go, but you'll see what a pretty dough this is. A little bit on top, look at more on my rolling pin. All right, I'm gonna continue to work with this. Let me see what we look like here. Mm, needs a little bit more. I'm gonna continue to work with this. When it's done, I will bring you back and show you what I have ended up with. So I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see that I've gone ahead and I went ahead and um, rolled this out so that it more than covers the bottom of the pie plate, as well as up on the sides. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna carefully, with my rolling pin, pull it up, pick it up, and slide it over, Whoops, slide it over. It's okay if it rips a little bit. Pie dough is very, very forgiving. Like right there it ripped. So I'm gonna gently kind of lift up the sides let it fall down in. Just lift it up. See over here, lift it up. It's just going to fall down into place without you actually pulling on it. And you can feel it around the, the edge. 
if it doesn't feel like, it kind of feels like a bubble under there, you know it's not all the way down in there yet. Like right here, I can feel it. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna set this aside. And then lastly, I'm going to do is the top. And this one, we don't have to worry about it as much. Just have to make sure that it covers the pie plate. And just give it a roll, turn it 90 degrees, just keep doing it. sticking a little bit just add a little bit more flour onto your rolling pin All right, this is looking good. Let me double check it. Yep, that will cover it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my parchment lined pan as well, cookie sheet. And these have to rest, the doughs have to rest for a half an hour at least. So when half an hour is up, I will come back and I will show you, let me see them all show you exactly what we're going to do next. Okay, so I just pulled the dough out of the refrigerator. It's been chilling for about a half an hour. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put um, the disc for mom's right on top. Oh, I went ahead and put in some of her, some of her filling, the little baby one here. So I'm going to go ahead and you know what I'm going to do? I just thought of that. I have a lightly beaten egg over here to use an egg as an egg glaze. I'm going to go ahead and just brush around the top of it with a little bit of the, the egg wash or the beaten egg. And that's just going to help the dough to stick on there a little bit. And I've seen this before in other cooking demonstrations. So I'm going to go ahead and just set that on top. And maybe just push it down a little bit, just kind of give it a little bit of help here. That looks good. And I'm not going to trim any of the crust because she loves this crust and I'm just kind of pick at it. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a couple little slits. Just allow the filling to steam so it doesn't break the beautiful crust. All right. I'm going to take a little bit more of that, that beaten egg and brush it all over. I think she is going to absolutely love this for dinner at some point. Okay, 
And there you go. There's a little baby one. I'm going to put that here on the on my pan. Okay, so now we have the big one, the family size. I'm going to go ahead and scoop the filling into this, the rest of the filling. Okay, while the dough was chilling in the refrigerator, I went ahead and I got my um, stove uh, preheated to 450 degrees. It has to be a high heat. And you want to make sure that you put your um, one of the racks on the um, the lowest setting. So all the way down the bottom. All of this in. A little bit more. I'm trying to get it all in. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take that top crust that we had and put it on top. Okay. I'm going to take the bottom one and kind of Pull it up a little bit here. It's a little stiff because it's been in the refrigerator, but that's okay. Like I said, we want this to be rustic. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is a family meal. Whoops. So good. Go ahead and see if I can. Yeah, this works. So what you want to go ahead and do is take two fingers with your right hand or whatever, and you take one on your left hand. I'm just going to push like that. You see how I'm doing that? It just makes a little bit of a nice design. Beautiful. Okay, just like we did with mom's, I'm going to go ahead and just make some slits to allow the steam to escape. Brush this with the beaten egg. Just a little bit, not too much. Make sure you get all of the crust. It's going to make it that really pretty golden color. If you've gone to all this work, you may as well take that little bit of extra step. Okay, and there you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put both of these 
on the sheet lined with a piece of parchment paper just to catch any spills if we have any. Like I said, it's gonna go 450 degrees on the bottom rack for I think 30 minutes. Let me just double check this. Um, 18 to 20 minutes, I'm sorry, 18 to 20 minutes. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and Yes, we're good. So let me back up. Okay, 450 degrees for 18 to 20 minutes until it's golden brown. Then when that's up, we're going to lower the heat to 375 and we're going to bake it for another 12 to 15 minutes. And you want to rotate it halfway to turn it around like that. So do um, 180 degrees. So when that's done, I'll bring you back and I'll show you what these look like. Okay, so I just took them out of the oven. I went ahead and I packaged mom's up. So, look how cute that is. So I just put it underneath a towel in a Rubbermaid container. So the guys are gonna take that over to mom. And this just came out as well. I think I might throw it into the broiler just a little bit more, just to get a little bit more brown around the edge. But this is how you make homemade chicken pot pie. It is absolutely delicious. It's actually perfect on a day like today. Everyone's been out, um, you know, plowing snow and clearing walkways and driveways and all that stuff. So I'm excited to share this with my family. So if you have any questions, please leave them below and hope you all take good care.